And Dolly knew more word than the two that came. So they left pretty quick. And so she asked, she asked her pastor about it. He said, well, if you, you know, she said, I want to, I want to, that's my thing. Within the first 10 seconds of the conversation, they knew Dolly was Christian. Should have been a handshake, a pat on the back, Lord, nice to meet you, sister, and let's go find some non-believers. But it wasn't. Oh, she's Christian. Well, you need to be like us. Well, then I, I thought she was Christian. <laughs> Apparently not. But the pastor told her she dog wanted to try to win them to Christ. <laughs> he said, you can do it. But if you're going to do it, start talking and don't stop. Because whoever's speaking is anointed. Yeah. you gotta, you got to understand that. If you're going to sit there and listen to somebody else speak, they're speaking anointed words into you. What and she God? did this three times. They went, she went through this three different times. They kept sending more knowledgeable people. <laughs> but then after that was all done, she got jacked up a little bit. Yeah. And passionately, well, they sowed weeds in your garden. Wow. They came in and sowed some... Now, you you know, did God really say that? I thought I understood that scripture, but now... No. If you're going to get into a, a debate with the enemy, don't stop talking. When they came up on Jesus and started talking, Jesus said, shut up. I'm doing the talking here. <laughs> you close your mouth and listen. Yeah. And he would speak anointed words and demons would flee. Mm -hmm. Because whoever's doing the talking is the one that's anointed. So when the enemy comes in and starts talking, you need to stop him. Amen. And you need to talk back. Amen. You need to speak back because you're king and you have jurisdiction over your kingdom and he don't. Amen. And he has to flee. Resist the devil. That's right. He must. Not he might. Yeah. He must leave. That's right. Legally. And you're not out of line. That's, that's, when G, that's why Jesus could honestly say he did not see it wrong to think of himself equal to God. Yeah. That's not, that don't mean he was trying to bump God off the throne. It means God created you as his children to be on the same playing field as he is. Yes. When he speaks anointed words, like me. That's right. Oceans be, sun and moon, stars, everything be because he said it. Mm -hmm. And he's created you in the same image. That's why we're equal. Yeah. Do I have the same compassion as him? No, not even close. <laughs> yeah. But I can have a glimpse and an understanding and all the things that he is, I can try to be more and more like if I could get the enemy out of my head and quit telling me that I'm some poor old sinner saved by grace. Yeah. And spend the rest of my years pulling a package, the gift that he gave me, and putting it on this putting it out on display once or twice a year and saying, Oh, that's just a beautiful look, wrapping paper so beautiful and the little bowl on top of it, and never tear it open and get to what it is. The, the gift is not, even than that, represent. When I was looking at representative this morning, I looked up the definition represent. And you know what I saw? Re-present. He re-gifted. The same gift that he gave us the first time. Which was dominion. And authority and power. And the enemy took our gift. And God said, give it back. Yeah. And then he gave it back to us. Mm -hmm. And we run around like we got some kind of messed up deal and God's just mean and hateful and blah, blah, blah. We get, no, get in the gift and read it. Yeah. Get the instructions out. I know men don't read instructions because we know everything. <laughs> but get in the instructions. Find out what, what all that gift will do. <clears throat> because like I said earlier, it's the perfect gift. It'll win every battle. It'll take you places you, you could have never imagined. It's the perfect gift. And, you know, it's... Right? You know, if anything, if you didn't get anything out of this, please get that. You're not trying to regurgitate the law 
When you're speaking, you're creating law. You are the law. Yes. Jurisdiction. Oh, I, that's my new favorite word. That's <laughs> right. Because it's, it's right up there with nevertheless. Yeah. Nevertheless is God's part. Yeah, we did all this st stupid stuff. Nevertheless, God saved us. That's right. And gave us everything we need. Mm -hmm. All things freely. And now I have the jurisdiction yes. over the kingdom mm -hmm. that he appointed me. Yeah. You know, ambassadors are not elected. Ambassadors are appointed by the president. Right? right? My Lord and Savior appointed me yes. king of all of mine. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying, you know, the building, the houses and stuff. You're, you're the realm you operate in. Yeah. You, your life, your family. It's, it's, you have sole and sovereign absolute jurisdiction over it. Right. We've got to understand that we're going to keep speaking the wrong things into that. Mm -hmm. Man, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that excites me. Mm -hmm.